Brisket is the heavyweight champion of barbecue. It's juicy, melt in your mouth tender with that crunchy bark that makes the 16 hour wait to cook it completely worth it. But it's about time we put the heavyweight up against some new challengers. From tongue to ribeye cap to Wagyu A5, what I have in front of me are 16 cuts that I think have a chance of dethroning the king. Today's mission is to see if any cuts when cooked like a brisket are better than a brisket. That makes sense. And like always, at the end of the video, I'll be doing a completely blind taste test to see if I can get any of them right and to see which one comes out on top. And with that, let's get started. Okay, so there's a concept that used to confuse me. How is it possible that brisket is tough and dry when cooked to medium rare, but extremely juicy and tender when cooked to well done? On the other hand, something expensive like tenderloin or filet mignon is literally the exact opposite. Don't believe me? Well, I'm gonna show you, and yes, I absolutely destroyed a tenderloin just to prove this point. So this right here is a brisket flat cooked to medium rare. And this right here is a traditionally cooked brisket cooked to well done. And we'll start by slicing into the medium rare brisket. And we'll try to go for a bite. That is extremely chewy. Medium rare brisket, pretty much not edible. But what about well done brisket? And as you can see, our well done brisket, completely different. It is just super tender, extremely moist, and it just pulls apart like butter. Well done brisket, that is good. But what about the tenderloin, AKA filet mignon? This right here is a perfect filet mignon cooked to medium rare. And over here, we have a hockey puck, AKA a filet mignon cooked like a brisket all the way up to 203 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's see if it bounces. Guess not. And we'll start by slicing into the medium rare tenderloin. As you can see, we have a perfect edge to edge medium rare. And I can tell this thing is just super tender. Remember how tough that medium rare brisket was? With this one, you don't even need teeth. Like that is remarkably tender. But what about our tenderloin cooked like a brisket? But remember kids, don't try this one at home. <gasps> Not only does it look extremely dry, but for some strange reason, it's almost like green. But gotta go for a bite. I've been trying this in for days. I mean, that right there is dry. I'm gonna need some water after that. So how the heck is any of this possible? Well, I'm glad you asked. They're very different muscles based on what they're used for. Now, a brisket is a weight-bearing muscle from the chest, and it's actually responsible for supporting 60% of a cow's weight. Now, compare that to a tenderloin. Really, the only thing this muscle's used for is to move the hind leg laterally back and forth. It doesn't have to pick it up or support any of that weight. What this means is that the brisket does a lot more work. And because of that, it is a lot more tough. And the technical reason why it's so tough is because it's it's filled with something called collagen, and it only starts to render above 160 degrees Fahrenheit, which means if we keep the internal temp below 160, that collagen is gonna remain tough, but if we bring it all the way up to 203 Fahrenheit like we typically do with brisket, it's gonna render down, get super tender, and turn into something called gelatin. All this talk about meat is getting me hot. I'm literally getting the meat sweats over here. We've all heard of gelatin. It's the exact same thing as jello, which has that really nice soft texture. So what this means is that cuts with a lot of collagen are best cooked like a brisket. Something like a tenderloin has pretty much no collagen in it. And that's why when cooked like a brisket, it was terrible. Let's also compare these muscle fibers. On the brisket, check out these long and super tough muscle fibers running throughout. Compare that to the tenderloin that has extremely fine muscle fibers also helping it to stay tender at lower internal temps. Okay, so to sum it up, muscles that are weight bearing that get a lot of use with long, thick muscle fibers that are filled with collagen are the ones that are best suited for cooking low and slow, like a brisket. So with that, let's take a look at our 16 cuts. But here's the thing, if I were to eat 16 cuts of meat every day, things would not be going too well for me. That's why I am very excited to share that the sponsor of today's video is Factor. For the last few weeks, I've been using Factor and it has saved me so much time and energy. Factor offers keto, calorie smart, chef's choice, and vegan plus veggie options. There's all sorts of delicious meals, including seafood, meat, and plant-based varieties. They even have a team of gourmet chefs who specially craft each meal and the options are endless. Factor makes meeting your nutrition goals easier than ever by delivering fresh, 
never frozen meals right to your doorstep. For me, it's the perfect post-workout meal. They arrive pre-prepared and ready to eat in two minutes, which is ideal for my busy lifestyle, and Factor makes it easy to adjust my order size or even skip a week when I'm traveling. Stick it in the microwave for two minutes, and there you have it. Today I'm having the sun-dried tomato chicken with zucchini noodles. A fire-grilled chicken breast with a creamy parmesan sauce, carrot orange ginger juice to go with it. I cannot wait to take a bite. Next up, we have roasted veggie and pesto tortellini with roasted green beans. And after a two minute cook, this is what we got. This time added the apple beet and ginger cold pressed juice to go with it, and it was phenomenal. Head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code MAXTHEMEEKI50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. And let's get back to the video. Okay, well in front of us we have our 16 cuts. Now the plan here is we're gonna cook each of them like a brisket to see which one is best. Now what I've done is broken these up into three distinct sections. We have our relatively tender cuts, our super tough cuts, and lastly, what I'm most excited about, we have our extremely exotic cuts. But first things first, what does it mean to cook these cuts like a brisket? And really, it's quite simple. All we have to do is two things. One, we're gonna cook them all low and slow in a grill that's at 250 Fahrenheit. And two, we're gonna bring them all up to a very high internal temp, exactly 203F internal for all of them. And it is time to cook our 16 cuts like a brisket, let's start with our relatively tender cuts. Now I know the title of this video says we're only cooking tough cuts, however, even these relatively tender cuts are still more weight bearing and like active muscles, which I believe should have more collagen and be pretty decent when cooked like a brisket. For our first relatively tender cut, we have the flank steak. I prefer flank steak cooked to medium rare, but it does have a good amount of fat and it tastes super beefy. So I have relatively high hopes for this one being cooked like a brisket. Now, when it comes to seasoning each of these cuts, we're gonna keep it all the exact same. Very traditional with just 50% salt and 50% black pepper. This is your standard Texas barbecue blend. It's a relatively thin cut, so no need to go too heavy on the seasoning. We'll just get both sides. We're cooking this to a high internal temp, so I'm actually gonna roll it up to hopefully keep it nice and juicy. And we'll just tie it up. And next up, we have my favorite cut of all time, the ribeye cap. This is a cut that is extremely beefy. I have a feeling this one's gonna end up being amazing. You can see those long, thick muscle fibers, almost like we saw with that brisket. Season it up, and it's ready to hit the grill. Next up, flat iron. This is a unique cut from the shoulder that in my opinion tastes as good medium rare as it does well done. And believe it or not, this is actually the second most tender cut on the cap. Next up, outside skirt steak, which happens to be my, how many times can I say something's my favorite cut? I just love this one, just like I love all of them. What can I say? I like them all. Sue me. The outside skirt steak is characterized by that deep red color, which tells us it gets a lot of blood flow and is super beefy. Just check out that spiral. Next up, the Bavette, AKA flat meat. Check out the marbling on this thing. If this thing doesn't stay juicy, I don't know what will. And next up, believe it or not, we have an entire chuck roll, AKA the shoulder. From this, all we're gonna take is the Denver steak, which is easily one of the best steaks. It's from the shoulder, so it gets a lot of work and should be filled with collagen. This right here is a Denver roast. This one's a lot thicker, so we can season it pretty heavily. With that, it's time to move on to our even tougher cuts. And first up, I gotta tell you guys something tongue in cheek. We got tongue and cheek. Just imagine a cow out there on the pasture just chewing away on that grass. That's gonna lead to a very tough cut, but I already know it tastes incredible when cooked low and slow. And next up, we got that tongue. Now, honestly, the right way to do it is actually to boil it and remove the skin, and we ain't got time for that. We're just gonna season it up and throw it right on the grill. Next up, we have eye round. This is an extremely lean, tough cut that's commonly used for beef jerky. Hopes are not too high for this one, but there's only one way to find out. And next up, we have the beef shank, AKA asabuco. This is a very common braising cut that I already know is great at low temps and cooked for a long time. And I'm really interested to see what happens with that marrow inside the bone. Next up, we have beef neck. Honestly, not that much meat on here. I just hope by the end of it, there's some edible meat left over. And we have made it to our third category, the most exotic meats I could find. First up, we have the oxtail. This is a great cut for braising, but just like the beef neck, there really isn't that much meat on it. So we shall see what happens when it's cooked on a grill. Next up, we have beef stomach, AKA tripe. It almost looks like a little cap. 
Now, I actually enjoy eating this in Vietnamese soups, but I'm gonna be completely honest. There is absolutely no way this ends up being good cooked like a brisket. We gotta give it a shot. If you don't wanna see an intestine, then stop looking for the next like 30 seconds. Intestine. This is a very common dish in many cultures, so I figured why not give it a shot on the barbecue? And second to last, we have the vacío. And you might remember this from a recent video with Al Frugoni. Did you slap it already? Oh, yeah. This is an extremely unique cut from Argentina, and it includes the flank steak, skirt steak, and bavet. I'm gonna leave this completely whole, not trim it whatsoever, just like they do in Argentina. It's completely covered in fat and silver skin, which should hopefully make it extremely juicy. And last but certainly not least, we have something extremely special. This is a Wagyu A5 top round. Top round is typically a very tough cut, but in this case, since it's Wagyu A5, the fat should keep it extremely juicy. And if I had to guess, I think this round, this one's coming out on top. Well guys, we finally have all of our cuts seasoned up. It's time to get it on the grill. And I have to say, I am absolutely shocked that everything managed to fit on here. But once again, we're cooking these at 250 Fahrenheit. And our goal is to pull each of these at exactly 203 F, just like we would with a brisket. Now that right there is a full grill. And after many hours of low and slow cooking, our cuts were ready to come off the grill. I decided to rank these from least favorite to favorite, and no surprises, coming in the last place was the beef stomach. It was so crunchy, I could barely cut through it, and it was straight up nasty. Very gamey, terrible texture, never again. Next up, the intestines. Looking like a snake that died and sat out in the sun for a week straight, it tasted surprisingly good, but the aftertaste was god awful. I round came in third to last place. This one looks way juicier than it actually tasted, just very bland and dry. Save this for jerky or cook to medium rare and slice thin for roast beef. Flat iron came in with a shockingly low score. The smoke ring was beautiful and it just came out dry, but don't shy away from this one. Cook like a regular steak, this is one of the best. Next up, the asabuco or shank. Sadly, most of the marrow disappeared, but it came out sort of as expected. Wouldn't be bad taco meat or something, but it was nice and tender. The best part of the oxtail was the ratio of flavorful bark compared to the meat. Not super juicy, but very beefy, and would also be perfect as a filling for something like a taco. Next up, the very unique looking beef neck. On this one, the flavor really stood out, a lot more beefy than something like the asabuco, but the lack of juiciness kept its score down. Flank steak came in ninth place. Extremely tender and good flavor, but it was quite dry. This one shouldn't be cooked too far past medium rare. Next up came the shoe. If you can get over the mental hurdle that you're eating a tongue, this one's really great when smoked to tenderness. I had higher hopes for the ribeye cap than seventh place. It was still very good, but slightly grainy, and by no means was it better than brisket. Skirt steak came next and was honestly amazing. It tasted as rich as brisket, but slightly more chewy in a good way. It just had more structure to it than smoked brisket, though it's hard to say if it's better than when cooked to medium rare. I whipped out the tuna slicer for the big boy vacío, and I ranked it as being as good as brisket, though more fun to cook because of the three muscles. While the flank component was overcooked, the bavette and skirt were insanely good. It just held in so much moisture due to the fat and protective layers surrounding the cuts. The whole Denver roast came came in fourth place and was unanimously voted as better than brisket. The only problem is it's way harder to source and more expensive. If you can get your hands on it, just cook it to medium rare, unless you really have extra time on your hands. In third place came the tried and true beef cheek. This one is so full of juicy gelatin, has such a powerful flavor and unique mouthfeel. It really should get more attention than it does and more than deserves the bronze. I can't believe I'm saying this, but Bavette came in second place. Now I did start with an insanely marbled piece, but it was still unexpected. Expected. It was perfectly balanced in terms of richness, and the texture was perfection. Coming in first place is, of course, the Wagyu A5 top round. Oftentimes, cheaters win, and honestly, using Wagyu A5 is considered cheating. It doesn't necessarily look it, but it had a super juicy mouthfeel, and more importantly, the flavor was just so far beyond its competitors. There's a reason Wagyu A5 is the most expensive beef in the world. We've determined which of these steaks are the best challengers to brisket, but before you go, I'm gonna take you back in time to two hours ago when I first tasted these completely blind. And as you'll see, it is very difficult to figure out which one's which. 17 cuts of meat, time to see how many I can guess correctly. Taste tester tie going on. Let's do this. Number one, that was the Bavette. And I'm gonna say Denver, Denver, we're gonna say Denver. Brisket, number four. Yeah, okay, nope, intestine. I don't like unknown meat going in my mouth. 
Why is it so crunchy? <laughs> Oxtail, flank steak, flat iron. They all taste the exact same. Number eight, Pasillo. Good flavor, great flavor. Neck, neck, neck. Number 10, I'm get, guessing Denver again. Double one up, I can do, yeah, I do what I want. Oh, that one is the stomach. We'll just say Asabuco, whatever, even though it's wrong. They taste the exact same, every single one. This is the worst taste test I've had to do. Surprisingly, when you cook everything like a brisket, it all tastes like a brisket. 13, ribeye. Number 14, we'll call the eye round that. I'm just gonna say flank steak again. Call it the outside screw stick. Number 17, the final piece. Neck. What do we got here? 41%. 41%. Significantly better than I expected. The one thing we learned is that when you cook things like a brisket, they all sort of taste like a brisket. Shockingly. Really hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you learned something, make sure to drop a like on the video, maybe a comment as well, and we'll see you next time.